am born with confidence. I am born with peace. I am born with peace. I am not. I am not. When was the I think 1972 this has been established. Great name and a great thinker, Jawaharlal Nehru, and he thinks always big. Any think of any big program in India, any time it has been started, whether it's a dam, whether the oil is, any industry, fertilizer industry, the great thing. Now I take this opportunity. to congratulate the pioneers of the university for their high tech education focus and uh, particularly what is education engineering education friends i want to tell you when you go out of jail to you the question is whether you become a job seeker our job creators that means university has got the responsibility like jnt who engineering institution to transform the students when they go out on this campus i pushing delhi people very difficult to push the delhi people <laughs> now friends i take this opportunity to congratulate the pioneers of the university for their high tech education focus Let me share with you few thoughts on the topic. Technology is a non-linear tool. Technology is a non-linear tool. In the knowledge economy that we are going through, in knowledge economy, the objective of society changes from fulfilling the basic needs of all around development to the upper. The education system will be promoted by creative. interactive self learning formal informal education with focus on values merit and quality the workers instead of being skilled or semi skilled will be knowledgeable self empowered and flexible skilled the type of work is a being structured and hardware driven will be less structured and software driven management style will emphasize more on delegation rather than giving command impact on the environment and ecology it is strikingly less compared to the industry economy for a sense of jury will be as i said knowledge based society with multiple opportunities i was reading a book i don't know how many of you read that book i was reading a book name of the book empires of the mind empires of the mind by denis wait this is a paperback book many of you particularly students are likely to read it. that is the empires of the mind by denis wait your library may have this book gives what type of the new world which we are facing now what was yesterday what is today i have modified certain points so then he take three hours continuation class but Yeah, when the student walks back to this class, reason is he does not go through the old notes, the crumpled notes. He does every lecture he prepares, updating what happened in the world, updating what happened in India. So, friends, I want to tell you the book. What does it say? What worked yesterday won't work today. I give you an example. What others say? Yesterday, natural resources define the power. Yesterday, natural natural resources like what country? Japan. They don't have natural resource. As Singapore does not have natural resource. Korea does not have natural resource, but they are number one in shipbuilding. but today today not the resource of knowledge is the power this nation is using the knowledge as a power that means the education institution like jntu will be a power house for knowledge next point yesterday hierarchy was the model today synergy is the mandate 
That means the education institution will be an enabler of the intersection of a multiple faculties toward mission and goals. Next point, yesterday leaders commanded and control. They are commanders, leaders. Today leaders empower and coach. The function I change. Today leaders empower and coach. That means potential leader will be empowered through exposure to the needs of sustainable development. Yesterday shareholder came first, today customers come first. This is all you know. Yesterday employees took order. Yesterday, in our time, 1950s and all, employees took order. Today, teams may be busy. Whether the automobile company, whether the education institution, and teams make decisions. That means the education institution can inject team spirit. Yesterday, seniority signifies status. Yesterday, seniority signifies status. Today, creativity drives the status. If the person creative, he does not be 60, 70, or 80, or 90. Even 25, 35, follow, he will head that project, program, or the organization. Yesterday, seniority signifies status. Today, creativity drives the status. That means education institution is the breeding environment for creativity. Innovation comes out of creativity. Yesterday, production determined the availability. Today, competitiveness is the key. Competition is powered by research. And the university has to have the motto, motto of teaching, research and teaching. Better teaching, better research. Better research, better teaching. Yesterday, value was extra. Today, value is empathy. Objective of value judgment we introduced to the education. Yesterday, everyone was a competitor. Today, everyone is a customer. Yesterday, profits were earned through experience. Today, work with integrity and succeed in integrity, such work you have taken just now. So friends, with this environment, let us see what is the innovation. Friends, it's I am the miss of the university and you have a innovation you are interested to know. I want to share something about innovation. It is a national wealth, innovation national wealth which we need to nurture. I was studying the global competitiveness report for the year 2013 and 14. There I find in terms of global competitiveness index rating, Switzerland is ranked number one. Singapore is ranked two. US ranked five. South Korea 25. UAE 19. China 29. India 16. We are performing in a range of competition index which needs to be improved. Growth, after all, improve means where you should move in the laboratories as you improve. Let me give an example. Recently I was at the Harvard University where I visited laboratories of many eminent professors from the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Science. I recall how Professor Hong Kong Park showed me his invention of nano needles, nano needles, which can pierce and deliver content into an individual targeted human cell. He, he actually he showed me the exercise. That's how nanoparticle science has shaped in the biosciences. On the other hand, Professor Vinod Manoharan of uh, same faculty and Harvard University showed how bioscience is shaping the nanomaterial science as well. He is using a DNA material to design self-assembling particles. When a particular type of DNA is applied on a particle on the atomic level, the professor is able to generate with his student a prefixed behavior and the automatic assembly from them. This could be our answer to our self-assembly devices on colonies in deep space. Thus, 
message you want to convey to faculty and the student. Thus, within a single research building, I saw how two different sciences are shaping each other without any iron curtains between the technologies. This reciprocating contribution of the sciences to one another is going to shape our future industry. Industry needs to be ready for it. And the academic institution have to be ready for it. Friends, are, are, we have to be ready. That's what I can message you about the country. Now, I talked to you three technologies, bio, nano, info. Now, the new area has come. New area. Go down. See, now a new trend is emerging. The aspect being introduced is that of ecology. Because when you go out on this campus, everybody wants a product, the environment, acceptable to the environment. Globally, the demand is shifting to a development of a sustainable system, which are technologically superior. This is the new dimension of the 21st century knowledge society where science and environment will go together. Thus the new age model would be a four-dimensional bio, nano, info, eco -based. Bio, nano, info, eco -based. That means you may be different departments you'll be working. But that's your project for you connecting bio, info, nano and eco. Then only you are uh, employable in the market, the future markets. Now, friends, I I like I have talked in my talk. Uh, it is in my website www.abdulkalam.com. www.abdulkalam.com. Full lecture available. And let me now I I go to the final view. Let me now discuss how nation's economic growth. Organization, creative leaderships are interconnected. National development, nation's economic growth, organizations, and leadership that are all interconnected. I'm going to talk to you how it is interconnected. First, now I will talk about national economic development, creative leadership, and connecting the competitiveness and create a leadership through certain well-known methodology. You can participate in the evolution of a competitive world to create a leadership. You can give your ideas also when I'm talking. Prosperity of the nation is powered by, remember that, prosperity of the nation, whether in India or America or any country, prosperity of the nation is empowered by economic development and great human capital. Economic development alone not sufficient. The human character, national character will build. Now I am going to give you a flow chart. The flow chart goes like this. When I read it, I am realizing. What is of course space program of Indian Space Research Organization? And another one, Agni program of India Signal Satellite. And the launch will be needed for India. At that time, there was no geosignal satellite in the world. Leader must have passion to really the vision. You are seeking. Leader must have courage to take decision. Leader should have a nobility in management. Nobility in management. Leader should have nobility in management. Leader should have been transparent in every action. This is the cry of the India. Leader must work with integrity and succeed with integrity. I have come across such type of people during the three mission, what I have done. For success in all this mission, you have to become a creative leader. Creative leaders means exercising the vision to change. <laughs> I have two, how much time? Students have got one question. Oh, no. But quickly you have to get up. Now, I have designed for technology before about seven uh, both uh, I hope it's a lifetime mission. It's a lifetime mission. What process?
or product, or unique human being, human being. My greatest friends will be great scientific, technological minds, great teachers, and great books. Our village, wherever I come from, I will work as a carbon neutral city, a town, or village. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your inspiring address. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor would like to now felicitate the Chief Guest. Thank you.